What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are here in the good old Copart Ford F2 Nifty. And we're here to do our last walk around of the week, which means it's Saturday. Time to get ready for a new week, guys. But Saturday means you guys are probably gonna go out and have some fun tonight, party tonight. I'm gonna be working. Let's get this party started. Number one on my list is an AT&T truck, a 2000 Chevy 3500. These are great vehicles. Guys, there's rows of them. I mean, I'm standing in the middle of just rows and rows of AT&T vehicles over here. And these are steals of deals out here at Copart. It's something not everybody knows about. Not everybody realizes you can get some extremely good deals. Now, obviously, the way these trucks are set up, most people probably aren't going to need all this stuff. You're probably not going to need all that center console stuff. This is probably not the bed you're going to be looking for. But there are a lot of people that actually need a setup just like this, and they would be more than happy to buy this truck exactly as it is. So, okay, you got a fire extinguisher that's probably not any good anymore. I, I would say that's probably no good. But it looks like right here we've got a little diesel generator. How about that? An is that an Onan Commercial 6500? I'm not sure what you would need a generator for on something like this, but it comes with it nonetheless. Plenty of, uh, yeah, stuff. I don't know what all this is, but plenty of stuff is what I'm gonna say. Lots of stuff. All right, the tires are in good shape. And you can even see, it still has the uh, remnants of the AT&T logo. You got good tires all the way around. The body's a little rough, and the interior's probably gonna be a little rough. You got a dent here, 141,931 miles on the clock. Let's go ahead and pop the hood real quick. You've got your dock for your most likely very proprietary uh, AT&T equipment. That's a Panasonic Web 301 dock. These things typically will fire right up and they will run top notch. Now this, I'm not sure what this is for. It's like, I think there's a special key that goes in here and it actually houses a key, but I, I'm not entirely sure. Unfortunately, we don't have time today to get a jump start on any of this stuff. So if this stuff doesn't start, it's, it's just gonna have to be the way it is. We're kind of going old school on it for a while. Just, we're out of time. Let's check the engine oil. Engine oil looks a little dirty, but I mean, come on, not nearly as bad as some of the stuff we've seen out here. I don't want to touch the transmission dipstick. <laughs> it's covered in grime right now. Let's put the key in it and see if, oh, dead as a doornail. Go figure. Okay, but it is listed as a run and drive. This is one of those off-lease deals where at and is done with it. Now, this is one of the older ones that I've seen here. Typically, they've got stuff that's a lot newer. You can see it's a surplus declaration, uh, out of service, scheduled for pickup. They don't want you washing it, adding fuel, you know? So this thing is done, they're done with it. Now, the good thing about it is typically when you buy these, they have been fully serviced their entire lives. Fleet maintenance at at and is no joke. I mean, they take care of the tie rods, ball joints, control arms, bushings, bearings anything that needs to be done on these they take really really good care of them so i have always had a great experience when purchasing an at&t vehicle so i highly recommend check out copart's at&t trucks i don't think you'll be disappointed especially if you get one like this that's got a nice little generator on it here we've got a 2002 chevy 2500 hd again this is another at&t vehicle i just wanted to show you around a few of them so you could get an idea of what you can expect to find out here Again, it's got the service bed, which is, again, probably something that most of you aren't going to need. Hey, what's interesting, though, is this one doesn't have anything in it. I found a lot of these that come with a ton of stuff in the service bed. Again, we've got decent tires. It looks good. Even the service bed looks good on it. You can see the meat on the tires right there. Now, the body, as usual, you're going to have some dings and dents on it. The front bumper has got a little bit of damage right here. This front grille's been pushed in just a hair. Probably actually damaged the headlight assembly too in the brackets. You can see it's got an added on transmission cooler. At least I hope you can see it under there. They they really do take such good care of these things. Let's take a look at the inside. Oh, wow. I wonder what the miles are on this one. <laughs> look at this, guys. 
uh, there's no foam left here anymore. Oh, the key was left on. The key was left on. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I can just see this is how the luck's gonna go today. Uh, the one day that we just don't have a whole lot of time to be dealing with uh, dead batteries and jump starts is the day that we're going to end up with every car that needs a jump start. This is very interesting. This is not a diesel, right? No, this isn't diesel, but it's got Hydro Boost for the uh, brake assist. This is not a diesel. I don't understand. Why would you have Hydro Boost? Okay, so we can see this is a 6.0 liter, so this is gas. I mean, I knew it was gas. You can look at it and see it's gas. 132,000 miles as of 8.8 8 of 18. So a year ago, it had 132,000 on it. It's really hard to say how many miles are on it now. But again, this one is listed as a run and drive. It's on my list. I don't think I'm going to buy one like this. I, I really have no use for this truck as I already have my, you know, old faithful right here. So I really don't have any use for this, but I thought it'd be interesting to show you guys some of the AT&T vehicles because they are great trucks. All right, boys and girls, I promise this is the last AT&T vehicle. I just want to give one more example out of all these rows of them, of the types of vehicles you can find here um, at Copart. Not just the Copart here in Oklahoma City, but your Copart probably has AT&T vehicles as well. This is an 06 Ford F350 XL Super Duty. You're gonna have the service bed, guys. But this is, to me, it's not a huge deal. I don't know what those weigh, probably about a bazillion pounds, but you could take the bed off. You know, it's really not that difficult to find a more appropriate bed that's gonna work for your situation. And you might be able to scrap it or find somebody that's gonna buy it. I'm sure this bed is worth something to somebody. I, I guarantee you it is. So again, we've got really good tires on this one. You know, it's really, it just varies car to car, but this thing's got excellent tires on the back. Uh, this front tire is, well, it's actually got really good tread on the front tire too. It's just flat and it's dry rotted. Yeah, that front tire is no good. So the back tires have been replaced more recently than the fronts. Um, what is this, an electrical outlet? So this must have an inverter. I don't think this one has a generator, but I'm sure this one has a pretty good size inverter on it somewhere. Oh, this one dings. This one dings. I don't see what the miles are on it, but... uh. She's a little dirty. That's another thing you're going to expect from these AT&T vehicles. Man, they're work trucks. They're work trucks. 156,000 miles. Now, typically, not all the time, but typically you're not going to have any warning lights on the dash on an AT&T vehicle. They just take that good a care of them. They really do. So normally when you buy these, you don't have to worry about check engine lights or bad sensors or bad transmissions or bad engines or things like that. I'm not going to say it never happens. I'm sure it does. But generally speaking, AT&T vehicles are just, they're just ready to go. They're good, solid vehicles ready to go. It goes right into gear. Same into drive. Engine sounds good. And AC will typically work as well. Let's see if we can turn on some uh, some air conditioning in here. That's interesting. I don't see air conditioning. Like max AC and stuff, I don't even see that on this. Tell me this is, there's no way in Oklahoma you're gonna have a vehicle like this that doesn't have AC, but I, I don't see it. I don't even see a button, of course. It's gonna be my luck, I'm just, I'm missing it somehow. Somewhere there's, look, look, we got strobe lights, all kinds of fun little accessory buttons. I don't see air conditioning, guys, are you kidding me? Let's pop the hood. I, I find it almost impossible to accept that we have AT&T trucks out here that don't have air conditioning. I have never seen an AT&T truck without air conditioning before. Not ever. So let's have a look. Shall we? Oh, okay. So here's what I see. I see a water pump, an alternator. Um, oh, we gotta have air conditioning. No, 
You're kidding me. There's no air conditioning on this truck. I find that exceptionally hard to believe. I really do. I really do. I, I guess I <laughs> I'm finally stumped. Something out here at Copart finally stumped me. Now this is your 5.4 liter three valve. Ooh. Um, you know. Uh, chances are by now at 155,000 miles, chances are very good that, you know, cam phasers, timing chain guides and things that were a problem with a lot of these have probably been taken care of by now. I cannot believe there's no air conditioning on this truck. Wow. Forgive me, guys. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm blown away. I, I, I keep telling myself, like, mentally, I'm telling myself, no, nah, it's there somewhere, Randy. You're just missing it. You're just missing it. I'm not missing it. But wait, it says right here, refrigerant R134A. AC. I don't see a compressor. Hold on, let me look down here. Let me look underneath it. Oh, the suspension on this thing is in incredible shape. Like at and I'm telling you, they don't cut corners, man. They really take care of things. I don't know, guys. Comment below. If I just missed it because it's been a long day, forgive me. Because I've never seen an at and vehicle without air conditioning. But I'll be honest with you, the AC or the air blowing out, it's, it's not cold. It's just regular. I didn't see any AC lines, service ports, nothing. So, and there's nothing on here about air conditioning at all. You know what I mean? So I, I don't think there's AC on this one. Nonetheless, these are good trucks. Probably need a little bit of love here and there. Like there's another one, you know, this one's got a bed on it. This would be more for, for your everyday person. You got a bed right here, peel off all the decals. You got another one right there. You got the vans over there. There's plenty of uh, at and vehicles that are very usable for the everyday Joe resellable so I figured I'd just show you the ATT vehicles now let's get out of here and go look at something a little more exciting now a lot of you wanted to see big rigs and other interesting things at Copart so I figured I would show you around here we have a 2001 Freightliner and yes I kind of stole the idea from Weston I saw his video purchase in the big rig and I was like you know what that's a good idea we have those out here I ought to show people now obviously this thing was in a pretty nasty wreck the suspension has been just completely ripped off the front and I mean shoved all the way back almost into the fuel tank over here. Um, Ada, wow. Here's your cab. I'll show you around that here in just a minute. Man, these things are freaking monsters, man. It, it just blows my mind. I, I got a, a very close friend, family member, I consider him family, that drives these for a living. And it just, it, it, when you see how big these are, right? It blows my mind how you can just cruise up and down the street in one of these. Like it's nothing, you know, especially construction zones. I get scared driving, <laughs> driving my little truck with a trailer behind it through a construction zone. I couldn't imagine uh, driving something this massive through traffic construction, especially with the way, with the way people drive today and they don't care uh, they just don't care anymore. Nobody cares about anybody anymore. They'll run you off the road and not give you a second thought. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, it smells awful. Whoa, that seat fell to the floor. I wasn't expecting that. My <laughs> Last time I was in one of these, I was a teenager. I was 13 years old and I hitchhiked from Flying J Travel Plaza on Morgan Road in, uh, I don't know if it's Oklahoma City or, or uh, Yukon or where. But I hitchhiked and hid in the back of one of these uh, from Oklahoma all the way to Granite City, Missouri to go be with my, uh, well, back then, my, my true love. You know how it is to be a teenager in love, right? Yep. Hitchhiked all the way. Thankfully, ugh. Oh, my God. I don't know what just happened there, but <laughs> that was pretty nasty. That was, pr that's, that's really nasty. That's bad. Okay. I gotta get out of this one, man. Obviously, we're not gonna try to start it or put power to it or anything like that at all. I don't know enough about these things to be really messing with them other than just showing you around. Hey, I will say this, luckily the truck driver that took me there, I shined his shoes. I used to be a shoe shiner when I was a teenager. 
I shined his shoes for him and I told him I was looking to get out of town and he wasn't some weirdo, he wasn't a creep. You know, he took me and he dropped me off with uh, without incident. Thankfully, I'd say I'm extremely lucky because bad things can happen to young boys and girls, uh, especially when you're hitchhiking, but he was a good truck driver. He was a good guy. He did me a huge favor. And I gotta thank all the truckers out there, man. Seriously. I don't understand how you can do what you do. I don't understand how you manage to be away from your families for so long. It would probably just scare the living crap out of me. I just don't think I could do it. But I got a lot of respect for you guys and gals out there that do. Now here we got a 2019 Kenworth. I don't know what happened to this. I guess that's just up to speculation. I mean, obviously it hit something really, really hard in the front end, man. Um, I'm pretty sure that motor is supposed to be sitting this way and not that way. I mean, it looks like, that for the cab anyway, it looks like everything back here was fine. I mean, it's something went into the windshield. I'm assuming that was the the hood. Must have just come on. I mean, look at it. Everything is just destroyed up here. So it must have come up and gone into the windshield. But uh, it looks like whoever was inside was probably okay. This gives you a better idea of this massive suspension system. Look at this, man. I mean, it's... It's huge. This is no joke. Wow. Look at the intercooler pipes, the charge pipes. There's your turbocharger right there. Let's see if we can climb up and take a little bit of a look. It looks like they threw some of the parts in here. Oh man, it still smells new. Wow. So there's the broken windshield right there. And this looks like it's got a, it's a two sleeper. That's pretty cool. It's got a bigger bed on the bottom, I think. And it's got another bed up top. This is actually nice. It's got stereo speakers and everything over there. I wish we could get back there, but they got so many parts to the truck back there. Can't really get back there at all. Uh, obviously, again, like I said, I don't, I don't know anything about these. So you're not going to catch me. Uh, well, it's not that you're not going to catch me. It's that I, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I am not going to attempt to do anything with these i wouldn't ever attempt to start one of these up i know even salvage totally crunched and smashed these things are still worth a small fortune so uh no i'm not i'm not gonna mess with them. i just thought it was cool to show them especially since i don't know anything about it. look at this thing man it's immaculate just absolutely beautiful truck and that's coming from a guy that doesn't know anything about them at all what is this a little bit of storage over here Oh wow, it's under the bed, I think. Lots of, uh, lots of oil. <laughs> Why is there so much oil? Certainly a brand new truck doesn't burn oil, right? Or do they? Is that just how they do? I don't know. There's your gauges. Some more gauges over there. It's like they cut out the radio. Someone took the radio out of it. All right, enough horsing around. Let's move on to the next one. Now, here is one that just, it, it, I love the smell of fire, you know, burnt rubber and plastic, but this is one that is just, uh, this is almost unbearable. Um, it's not the plastic that smells, it's the garbage that smells. I mean, I, this thing must still be full, and uh, it smells like, it smells like I'm going to throw up. Um... I may not be able to do this one. Um, oh my god. Okay, so the drive axle is hanging out from underneath it right there. My god. My goodness. Oh. Oh. Whew. Okay. Maybe we'll try from this angle. Um, anyway, here it is. I'm just going to show it to you real quick. I can't do this. Oh my god. Okay, moving on from that. I, I'm sorry, I can't I can't do that. There's just no way for me to do that. We have a freight liner. This is a dump truck. And this isn't a big rig. I mean it's not a semi. It's definitely big, but it's not a semi truck, you know what I mean? She's pretty big, she's got a good size dump bed on her. I'm not even sure why this is here. It doesn't look like it's wrecked. 
it actually looks to be in pretty good shape man please forgive me for that for for a minute ago i i, I didn't realize that was going to smell that bad i was hoping that i could handle it but i i couldn't i just i couldn't handle that now here's one of your airbags right here and you can see it's been blown and broken to pieces now i don't know what that means i'm assuming there's a mount or something oh that rim is smashed too right there i don't know how well you could see that so this thing was in some kind of an accident on the rear end here good thing come look at it and i don't know what to look for guys i'm just looking around you know what i mean Ugh. Sniff test, these fail. Fail the sniff test every time. As I said, I don't know anything about this stuff, guys. I'm just here trying to show those of you that may be interested in these types of vehicles that they've got them. Man, Copart has this stuff too. They've got just about everything, man, from snow snowboards, snowmobiles, uh, boats, jet skis, semi trucks, cars, vans, SUVs. They've got just about everything you could ask for. Uh, if you're interested in a vehicle, <laughs> most likely Copart's gonna have it. Now we're moving into the trailers, and I think we've only got two that are for sale this week out here. Keep in mind, Oklahoma City is not a big Copart yard. This is an 08. What I like about this one is it's a hail damage. Now, I'll tell you something. If I'm looking for a cheap trailer, I'm not going to worry about hail damage, are you? I mean, I don't care about hail damage. I'm looking for something to go camping in, right? What has hail got to do with it? And honestly, I see some dings around it, but I mean, really? Uh, not enough for me to go, yeah, I don't want this because it's got hail damage. Heck no. Heck no. This is, this is decent. Let's see what the inside looks like. It's not a flood. It's just hail damage. I didn't even know you could total something like this for hail like really <laughs> it smells decent it's small it's very small yeah so it's got a little couch here i'm assuming there was a bed or something that went there or it folds out or i don't know you got your little little privacy curtain there so you got your little sink and you got your little stove table to eat at more chairs there's your bathroom. I'm not going to open that. Some Oreo cookies on the floor. wonder where the refrigerator is. Oh. <laughs> where, should we open it? I almost got sick earlier. I don't... Yeah. Oh, God. There's mold. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> it's been real, guys. I can't do the smell. <laughs> I've been feeling under the weather the last few days, man. And I'm real sensitive to nasty smelling... <clears throat> nasty smelling stuff <laughs> we got one more to look at if we can find it it's a fifth wheel so uh let me go see if we can find it they're closing this yard up like right now so we gotta hurry up and get this over with and get out of here next on the list we got a bigger one this is a fifth wheel it doesn't have the uh, lot number on it but this was an insurance claim for hail damage as well the hail damage doesn't bother me when you're talking about these things if it's a flood that's one thing but Hail's a whole nother. It's a, uh, looks like a new way. New way. New up. Let's see if we can get inside of this one, have a look real quick. See if we, I don't know, funny smells. It just smells like a, smells like an old mobile home. You got your refrigerator, you got your freezer, uh, oven, stove, microwave, plenty of cabinet space. Wow, a dual sink. This is nice. Nice little table with chairs. Now this is a slide out, if I remember right. This whole area right here, all the way to here, pushes out and gives you a whole lot more room. So this will open up a whole lot more. Uh, I'm not so sure about the pink chair there, but you know, whatever. Couch, another little rocking chair. You step up right here and you go into, looks like you got a sink here. And I assume the bathroom is probably back here. Yep. You got a shower, got your toilet, a nice size bed. That's a really decent size bed back here. Oh, but you know what I see that I didn't see? Look at this broken up wood. This is all just destroyed. It's rotting all the way down. 
I didn't see that. It looks like that window, this whole wall by this window right here has been leaking. You can see where it just warped and rotted the wood on that side. That sucks. And there's also rotting over here by this window as well. Down there, I'm not going to climb over there, but down there's a lot of uh, warping wood. Uh, well, hail damage doesn't bother me all that much, guys. But uh, when you talk about the wood in these things rotting, like for me, that's just, that's a deal breaker. Not that I plan on buying one anyway. I mean, I'm the type, I like to go camping, but I prefer to go camping in a cottage or a, heck, even a tent. You know, I don't really see the point in going camping and dragging some big trailer behind me. I mean, I'm not against it. For those that do it, you know, that's great. I'm glad it works out for you, but for me, it's just not my cup of tea, you know? I would prefer to either sleep out in the wilderness, sleep in a tent, or get a hotel. <laughs> I don't know. Pulling something like that behind me does not sound like a whole lot of fun. I think we got one more to look at. We got a, we got a pickup truck we're going to look at, and then we are getting out of here before they come and physically throw us out of the go-part lot. <laughs> All right, last one of the day. No, it's not the F-250. It's an F-350. Uh, an 08. Oh, I'm sorry. F450. How did I even think that was an F350? Yep, yep. F450. Lariat. Super Duty. Power Stroke. Dually. This, this, this is a big truck, man. It's a real truck. No joke. Look at this bed. Has, has snapped. Look at that. It's literally snapped. Something tells me this truck has put in some work. You can see it used to have a fifth wheel in there. And ta tail lights are held on with uh, sheet metal screws. That's always good. <laughs> well, I'll be honest. I was I was actually kind of interested in this one at first, but uh, this looks like a truck that's been rode hard and put away wet. Comment below. Tell me if you agree. Don't get me wrong. It's still a nice looking truck. It really is, especially for a work truck. She's not bad looking at all. And pop the hood. Well, if I can find a dag burned hood release. Hell, where is the hood release on this? Good Lord have mercy. Where is the hood release on this thing, guys? Is it on the side? Up under here? I don't see it. There's got to be a latch. Where is it? Right here? That's broken. Oh, okay. There's a latch right there. And the cable's broken off. And I'll bet there's not one on the other side, is there? Nope, there's not. So, with a broken cable, good luck. I'm not going to fight it because they really are shutting it down for the day. And I don't want to. I don't want to inconvenience them. They shouldn't have to come tell me when I need to leave. You know, I'm a grown man. I know what time it is. And I don't want to uh, push my luck here. So. Don't get me wrong, I've never had any problems. These people are always real nice, real nice people, but when they're ready to go home, I don't want to be the reason they don't get out of here, you know what I mean? Well, let's fire it up. Reduced engine power. Okay, so that already tells me we got something wrong. Okay, so the mileage is 161 and change. Reduced engine power. ABS light, check engine light. That looks like to be that look uh, and an airbag light. Okay, so she's got some issues. Goes right into gear, forward and backward. No issues there. Brakes are solid. The interior of the truck looks good. All your little auxiliary switches, you've got your built-in brakes right here. Trailer brakes, real nice. Trailer disconnected, obviously we knew that. I mean, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do anything. We can't pop the hood on this. Can't take it for a drive. I guess we can take one last walk around. Window works. Yeah, I really don't think I'm interested in this one anymore. It's already at like 8,500, and I was like, okay. You know, maybe, maybe a little bit bigger of a truck, something a little bit newer, but truthfully, she seems to be running great, but obviously there's something going on under the hood there. And uh, we probably couldn't see it 
even if we pop the hood, I doubt it's something you're going to be able to physically look down in there and, and go, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, she's got something wrong with her, obviously. And you can't bring code readers out here, guys. And I'm, I'll never do it. I'm not ever going to risk uh, being able to do what I do at Copart over bringing a scanner out here and getting in trouble. So, you know, it is what it is. On something like this, especially for this price, uh, I'm just going to have to walk away from it. And you know what? The truth of the matter is, I really don't need a truck like that at all. That's way too much truck. I had so many people telling me I need to replace this one right here. You need to get a nicer truck, Randy. Instead of the Corvette, you should have bought a newer, nicer truck. I don't want a newer, nicer truck. At least not right now. This truck is great. It looks decent. It's perfect for what I do, running errands, driving through all this nasty Copart yard. You know, I mean, look at the ground. It's riddled in parts and debris, rocks. 352,000 miles, runs and drives like it's brand new. I don't need anything better than that. This is my old Betsy right here. She's a tough old girl. And I'm sorry, 160,000, you already got problems. So you know what that means? I'm gonna walk away so that's going to be it for the copart walk around this week guys i hope you enjoyed the content if you did please consider giving the video a big thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel if you're not currently subscribed i got to give a big shout out and thank you to copart corporate for yard 18 and honestly i don't know what yard number this is but this is the more sublot it's not in more though it's actually in oklahoma city but anyway Big shout out to all the people here, all the people at corporate, all the people at Yard 18, everybody that makes this possible. Thank you all. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram and on Facebook, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Don't forget to share the content with your friends if you enjoy it. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.